We're back, Jack. Back with <laughs> R&B Reptiles. Guys, you know what time it is. Intro time. Roll that ball. Oh. So today we have some animals coming out of the baby rack as well as we have some the last ones actually come out of quarantine that we haven't really talked about yet we've teased a little bit and alluded here and there but it's pretty cool so first of all let's just move up our sunset stuff we have uh, a trio that we've talked talk to you about of 66 percent possible head sunsets that we got from our buddy dominic yep over at rizzo's over at the riz so we're gonna move these guys up. This is just a normal, a very pretty normal, super bright. Male. Male, correct. And we may decide to change our minds about the male because I'd much rather have a visual or 100% head than a pos head going to the females to try to prove it out quicker because we could be chasing our tails on that forever. You know what I mean? But for now, we have him and he's cool. I mean, for a normal, super reduced, very bright pattern. Uh, they say that there's uh, markers for the head sunsets, but uh, it's kind of trade secret and it's kind of like people mm. don't really talk about it. So we have a couple friends that said that if we sent them pictures, they would say we'll, yes or no, we'll but see. of course it's, it's still a guess. It's got this blushing. So, you know. We'll see. We'll put him up here in his new home. And then, of course, we have the females. I know I'm getting like. No, you're fine. Real close to the camera while I'm crossing. <laughs> but this girl, Shed, they're getting a little tight in these quarters, so happy to move these guys up. This is a lesser. 66% posset sunset. Lots of blushing. Like, I don't know. There's things about these, like there's always, always like polygenics, like different morphs can look better or worse in and of themselves. But, um, you know, when you're dealing with things, looking at possible hats, hoping that prove things out. If you have a animal that looks better than it should, you know, it, it gives you a lot of hope. Gives you hope that you, you picked the right one. I guess is what I'm trying to get to. So we're actually out of space in our female racks. So they're going, everything's going here until we got our new ARS racks. <laughs> we filled up that 44 slot real fast. Ryan and I are still talking about if we should get another ARS rack um, just because. It's another lesser. 66% head sunset. Also very good looking. We'll see. Give us some uh, good juju, guys. <laughs> so it'll be cool to produce some, for sure. Yeah, it's always good to take a shot at um, some cool recessive genes and, you know, give it a whirl. And uh, the other thing that we're doing is moving up the ones that came out of quarantine. This is actually a trio of 100% het tri-stripe, 100% het lavender albino that we got from Ebby Built Constrictors. Real nice guy. This is the male. He's actually producing sperm. So he could breed right now, even though I don't really have anything to put him to. Um, if I was gonna put him to something, it'd be one of the lavender things that we have growing up, but that wouldn't be for another year. Um, but yeah, lavender tri-stripes, man. I love tri-stripe. I don't know if I've said that enough. And I think we love lavender, and I think the combo is gonna be really cool, and especially what I would like to do is to put it into dream sickle combos that also have like Enchi and Leopard in it, so you can get like that starburst kind of effect along with, you know, it being Dreamsicle and Tri-Stripe, Tricycle. 
Tricycle. <laughs> that would be a cool name. It's gonna be the tricycle. <laughs> if we produce it, it's the tricycle. <laughs> and, all right, so that's the mail. We moved these over here just now out of the quarantine rack. Yeah, this is just staged. She actually has a tiny bit of shed on her, which Ben hates it when I take shed off of animals on video. I know, it was riveting. <laughs> so this is a female, one of the females. Um, a lot of the markers with the he head tri-stripe is you'll get the elongated alien heads and the reduction down at the tail. And usually there's the stripe at the end of the tail. But I, this was produced out of a visual lavender tri-stripe that uh, the guy from Evieville got from the Snake Keeper, I think? It was TSK? Pretty sure. I'd have to go back and double check, but I'm pretty sure that's where we got it from. And uh, yeah, so we're growing these guys up and it's a long shot, double recessive project for us, but we love long shots. And with our pairings that we have this year, if you've been following us, it's nothing but gambling. That's all we do here. <laughs> Educated gambling. So again, you see this reduction in stripe Oh, calm down. So yeah, that's our trio. And hopefully, they're eating very well. Very well, so they'll get up to size pretty quick. So yeah, that's the uh, the secret. The secret's out. That's the last uh, hidden project. At the moment. Right? right. You believe that? <laughs> <laughs> no more secrets here. <clears throat> So we are in the room and we are flipping some bins. So we have to <laughs> process some bags of Pro Coco and these are in blocks. And uh, so we're gonna show you real quick how to do it. I know we've done this before, but since we have it out, we might as well show you guys. So Ryan, get up in here and I'll show you one of our newer tricks. Safety first, eyes off, hands off. Don't cut yourself. So I'm just cutting the top of the bag of the Pro Coco and I wanna keep it kind of close to the top of the handle. Oh, jeez. He's going off the rails, ladies and gentlemen. You don't cut the handle off. It's not my process. I don't mind cutting the handle off. Keep your eyes on the camera. I'm eyeing the camera. All right, so then we toss that. If you keep the handle on, you can use it to help flip you later. Oh, well, yeah, you guess. So anyway, I'm gonna do two of them real quick. So Ryan's gonna... <laughs> Okay, I'll leave the handle on that one. Now, take your handy dandy watering hose. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna fill this up with water, the bag. So, I like to make sure I try to get as much on both sides as possible. You can see it fills up a bit in the bottom, but it doesn't get crazy. And what it's doing is it's just absorbing and expanding. And uh, what we used to do was we would fill this whole tub up, hold them underwater for a couple minutes, pull them out, and then break them up in another bin. Um, doing it this way, we don't have to fill up the whole bucket. Uh, so that helps out a lot with time saving and um, you know not needing an extra bucket. So set that one aside, we'll do the other one. And then once we're done, I'll show you how to break it up. So Ryan, uh, we might have a little issue. Right now, currently, we can fit one more bin, one more tub, so for incubation. Yep. We have, in two weeks, two clutches that can come out of the incubator, possibly, it might take them a few days, and we have one, two, three, four. Four and four. All right, one, two, three, four. That can go, that can be laying anytime now. Well, three that are, well, two that are close. One that has got probably 30 days still, 
Okay. Um, one hasn't ovulated yet, but has follicles to the size where I would say is going to go. Okay. So we've got two. So, so how close we're going to cut it? We and have, have, and we have nowhere to put a single baby. We have three. We just opened up three slots. Well, we're going to sell a few of these skinks are going to go out, but that's true. One of the funny things about being a breeder, sometimes you have to balance all this stuff out. Um, so we have one room for one more clutch. We have two females that should be going anytime now. And then we have two clutches that should be coming out in probably three weeks total. They'll come out. So it'll be right there. We'll be right there. <laughs> it's fun stuff. Guys, I wanted to give you guys a quick update on one of our favorite snakes in the collection. It is a file snake. So this is one of the babies we picked up. They are super cool, a little flighty as they're young, but I want to, oh, it's probably musking me. Dang it, I forgot about that. All right. Dude, you gotta let it run through your hands. I'm trying. No, you're not. You just yanked it up out of sleep. I don't know why it's all on, right? It's musking everywhere. So this is a file snake. They're from Africa. It's very good. We haven't had them try to bite or anything. Today's the day. <laughs> um, but the scales are truly keeled and they just feel so cool. They're very purple. Um, man, this is like our favorite snake that we've picked up. I mean, just beautiful, beautiful animals, active, inquisitive. CBB from Sarpamitra. Yes. Captive born and bred. So this one was not from, uh, from the wild as an egg. This was actually in his collection his, he had the parents in the collection and produced eggs and babies so we also have a few wild caught ones as a project look at how nice they calm down yeah they're great they really are a great animal just got spooked because he was sleeping yeah and they'll musk a little bit but i get close up on those scales they're super cool Mm-hmm. man such an awesome animal. But yeah, getting big. This is a male. And uh, we have a female coming. And we can't wait. We also have, I guess that's another one of the things we haven't really talked about. We, always didn't, we didn't have any more secrets. <laughs> we always have secrets. <laughs> Fingers crossed, guys, we'll be producing some of our own captive born and bred this fall. Yes. Oh, I just said that we had wild cults in the... Did you? Yeah, we had a, we have a group of wild caught that are in um, a separate quarantine that are for just wild caught animals. Actually, those are the only animals in there at the moment. The only wild caught stuff we currently have, but it's our first time playing with wild caught stuff, and so we're keeping it very separate and like doing everything, you know. Separate days, separate tools, separate everything. Yeah. So, but it's it's a different world, but it's really cool and it's fun to do. Um, so we're excited. Fingers crossed we'll be having some baby cross... These aren't cross-eye. What is the... No, they're cross-eye. They're cross-eye? Yeah. You keep oh. thinking they're capensis. Oh, yeah. that's right. We are going to break these apart. They've sat for 25 minutes or so, half hour. And um, this one is uh, nice and full. It maybe needs a little bit more water. Um, but you would flip this upside down. And I'm just going to get it started make sure there's nothing floating around up there and plastic flip it upside down and i'm just gonna tear the plastic back toss that in there's a trash can here now ryan if you want to get up in here real quick so this is should just fall all apart and you just kind of break it apart now some of it is still a little dry so i'm going to add a little bit more water but there's a big pieces oops sorry that uh, they just kind of break apart. So it's still a little dry. Probably could use a little bit more water. But see, it just kind of falls apart. And you can tell there's not any sand in this. Prococo is pretty good about that. Um, 
like a lot of other ones that are on the market, but sometimes you'll notice the quality is different. And uh, yeah. So Ryan is making fun of me because I didn't use the handle pull tab, as he calls it. And I will use, open up that one and see if that one was easier. And as you can see, if you can get it to um, absorb the water a little bit more, it breaks apart pretty easy. Uh, if not, it's still not hard. So you just move it around until you get all the big chunks broken up. And that's it. It's pretty easy. And that's how you process a block of Pro Coco. Pro Coco. Pro Coco is not a sponsor. We're getting all angry. It's not a real sponsor. We just got some shirts. <laughs> we do right. like Pro Coco. Look at this. Sweating all around the circle. <laughs> not very breathable. It's a good uh, iron on it. It's a good uh, winter shirt. It's warm. It's really warm in my snake room. <laughs> yes, they're cross eye, not compenses. Like compenses. Cape pens. There's cape file snakes. Cape file snakes. Forest file snakes. Yeah, these are forest files. Well, there's more than that. There's like nine different file snakes from Africa. But <laughs> yeah, well, keep those like, in your file. I think there's only like. Or than in captivity in the United States. Mm -hmm. I have a whole book on it. <laughs> well, thank you guys. We're gonna move on because <laughs> I want to get off my knees. Come on, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that broke apart, all right. Not too bad. Definitely use a little. <coughs> I think I ate some. <laughs> 